Hi, this is Mrs. LaBarbera. This is AP Physics Chapter 10, Dynamics of Rotational Motion, Video 4. Today's topic is work and power in rotational motion. The objectives are, no, work is done when a torque causes angular displacement. Understand when a torque does work on a rotating rigid body, the kinetic energy changes by an amount equal to the work done. And be able to solve problems that involve work and power for rotating bodies. Working in rotational motion. One here is a picture for child applies a tangential force. When the child applies tangential force, cause this merry-go-round, a displacement d theta, the child is doing work. The tangential force applied to a rotating body does work. The work dw done by the force, well, a point on the rim moves a distance ds, is dw equals to f10 times ds. If d theta is measured in radians, then ds equals r times d theta. So dw equals to f10 times ds, ds equals r times d theta. Now f10 times r, that is a torque. So dw equals to torque times d theta. To find a work, while the child applies for a, theta, for a displacement from theta 1 to theta 2, you integrate it. If torque Z is constant, then W equals to torque times delta theta is very similar to force times the displacement. So work done by a constant torque, W equals torque times delta theta. The work done by a constant torque is the product of the torque and angular displacement. If torque is expressed in Newton times meter, and then the angular displacement and angular displacement is in radian, the work is in joules. Only the tangential component of force does work. Other components do not do work. What are the other components? It could be the a radial component that doesn't do any work. Also, it could be the component that's parallel to the rotational axis that does not, none of those cause rotation. So when a torque does work on a rotating rigid body, the kinetic energy change, changes by the same amount equal to the work done. So work total equals to one half i omega two squared. It, this is kind of like final angular speed squared minus one half i omega one squared. Power is the rate of doing work. How fast you're doing work. Power is dw over dt. dw, we already know, equals to torque times d theta over dt. So power equals to torque times omega. This is very similar to the power we have learned in translational motion is w over time. So when the, when the torque acts on the body, it rotates with angular velocity omega z. Its power is a product of torque and omega z. This is analog to relationship power equals f times v. Let's take a look at this example. The power output of automobile engine is advertised to be 200 horsepower at 6,000 RPM. What is the corresponding torque? So we know power is 200 horsepower. And we know omega is 6,000 RPM. So the corresponding torque is P divided by omega. We just have to make sure we use the standard units. The horsepower have to be changed into watts and um, RPM have to change into radian per second. So <clears throat> horsepower, each horsepower, one horsepower is 746 watts and uh, um, RPM is revolution per minute. One revolution have two pi radian and one minute have 60 seconds. So in this case, minute and minute cancels, revolution and revolution cancels. So you'll have radian per second. So you solve for torque, torque equals 237 Newton times meters. Another example, an electric motor exerts a constant torque of 10 Newton times meter on a grinding stone mounted on its shaft. The moment of inertia of the grinding stone about the shaft is two kilograms times meter squared. If the system starts from rest, find the work done. So there are three things. First, find the work done by the motor in eight seconds. 
Next, you need to find kinetic energy at end of this time. Lastly, you need to find average power delivered by the motor. So let's take a look. Work equals torque times uh, the angular displacement. And angular displacement, in this case, since you start from rest, so angular displacement is one half alpha z times t squared. Alpha z is torque divided by i. So we, we know torque is 10, i is 2, so alpha is 5. T is 8, so 1 half times 5 times 8 squared, you can find a delta theta. Then you plug delta theta and uh, um, torque z in, you will have 1600 joules. Oh, I think I forgot another parentheses over here. Okay, so that is the work done. What is the kinetic energy? Well, kinetic energy equals one half i omega z squared. This omega z is a final omega. Omega z equals alpha times t because omega naught equals zero. So alpha, we already said it's 10 divided by 2, that's 5. 5 times 80 is 40 radians per second. So k equals one half i is 2 times 40 squared. You'll have 1600 joules. That equals to work. So it verifies kinetic energy because the inertial is zero. So changing kinetic energy equals to work. So, or you can just use this equation, total work done equals the changing kinetic energy since K1 equals to zero, K2 has to be 1600 joules. Lastly, what is the average power? Average power is total work divided by time. Well, we already know work is 1600 joules and time is eight seconds. So we have 200 watts. So there is another way to find average power. We can use torque times the average omega angular speed. So we know final speed is 40, initial is zero. So the average is zero plus 40 divided by two. So average is 20. So 20 times 10 give you 200. So it verifies our average power is 200 watts. Check your understanding. So you apply equal torque to two different cylinders, one of which has a moment of inertia twice as large as the other cylinder. Each cylinder is initially at rest. So after one complete rotation, which cylinder has greater kinetic energy? Let's see, you apply the same torque and cause the same displacement, one complete rotation. That means you must have done the same work. Since you have done the same work, you must have imparted the same kinetic energy. So the answer is both cylinders have the same kinetic energy. Okay, you apply the same torque over same angular displacement. On both cylinders, you do the same amount of work on both. And work equals the change in kinetic energy. They both have zero kinetic energy before. So you must have imparted the same kinetic energy to both. That's it. The answer is number three. That's it for today. Thanks for watching. See you next time.